So for this first project, we're gonna start out by using one of these Christmas ornaments and I'm just gonna pop the top off, which is easy, it just comes right off. Uh, Dollar Tree just glued these together. And once I pop that off, I'm gonna remove the tag and then I'm gonna take some stick glue and I'm gonna apply glue to the entire front of this and then we're just gonna glue some scrapbook paper down. Now I'm pretty sure I got this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. It's just been in my stash. But I'm not really for sure on that, so yeah, you can use any scrapbook paper that you have on hand. Now once I glued the paper down, I'm just going to take my brayer and I'm going to smooth out any wrinkles. And this also helps to adhere to the Christmas ornament better. It helps the paper adhere to the Christmas ornament. There you go. That's what I wanted to say. Now you just want to cut off any excess paper left over so that we have a nice clean edge. When we have our paper cut, we're going to glue back on the top of the ornament, that metal piece that we took off earlier. We're going to glue that back on. Now we're just going to set that to the side and we're going to continue working on the rest of the project. And you're going to need two stars. I got two different size stars. One's a big one and one's a small one. And I got these out of a pack that I purchased off Amazon, which I'll put that link in the description box below. And what I want to do is on the small one, I want to fill in the hole there with some spackling. And I'm not going to fill the hole in on the large one because we're actually going to need that hole. So I'm going to take some spackling and fill in the hole of the small star. While our spackling is drying on our small star, I'm going to take some barn red paint from Apple Barrel and we're going to give this star two coats and you're just going to need to paint the front of it because the back will be glued down. While our red paint is drying, we're going to paint our small star and we're going to use antique white to paint this. And I'm going to give this two coats and we're only going to need to paint the front because again, the back's going to be glued down. Now I'm going to take one of these small gift stickers that you can get out of a sticker pack from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take my red Sharpie and I'm just going to color this in instead of painting it. These little wood stickers that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I have found that's easier to use paint markers or even Sharpies to paint these because they're so tiny. So I'm going to start out by painting it. And these are the colors I'm using. I mean, you can use whatever colors you want. This is just what colors I've chosen. And I'm going to fill in all those like little berries or dots on the present with the red Sharpie. Then I'm going to take my green Sharpie and I'm going to paint the uh, like little squares of the present. You can see here what I'm doing. I'm just trying to explain to you like these are just so much easier to do with sharpies this is the main point of leaving this on the video i just want you to see how easy it is to do but you use whatever colors you want to use then for like the little gift wrap and the bow at the top i'm going to use this silver metallic sharpie again it's just filling in these fine details that's why i love these like little sticker things because I, for some reason, I like coloring in very small objects. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, plus you could kind of, I mean, it's kind of fun to come up with the different colors that you could use. And here's a closer shot of what everything looks like once I have it painted with my Sharpies. For this part, you're going to need six wooden beads and some jute twine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to string on the wooden beads. I'm not painting these. I want to leave them the natural wood. And you're going to string six of them on to the jute twine. Once I have those six beads strung onto the jute twine, I haven't tied any knots yet or anything. I'm going to run that through the hole in the red star, as you can see here. And um, yeah, I had some trouble with it fraying. I should have hot glued it. If you have trouble with jute twine fraying like that and you can't get it in the hole, you can always just use some hot glue to get it through. So yeah, but anyways, I decided to use the other end. 
And you can see here, I'm just putting it through the hole and then I am going to leave it hanging just like you see here. Still haven't tied it in a knot because I'm gonna take the silver bell that I have and I am going to put that on the end of my string. Once I have that bell on, now we're gonna tie this in a knot so that the bell doesn't come off. And I'm just gonna tie a double knot onto this. Now we're gonna grab that ornament and we're gonna grab some of this burlap. I just grabbed a piece and cut it into a square. It doesn't have to be perfect. And right now I'm just trying to lay everything out on how I want it onto my ornament because we're gonna glue this all onto the front of this ornament. And right now I'm just trying to figure out where I want it. Once I know where I want everything, I'm gonna start gluing it down and I'm gonna start out by gluing down the burlap piece. I'm just using a piece of greenery that I got out of a pack from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna glue that down on top of this burlap piece. Then on top of the greenery, I'm gonna glue down the red star with the beads and the bell. And now I'm gonna glue on that little present that we painted with our Sharpies onto the other side of the star, onto that uh, piece of burlap that's hanging down. And then I'm gonna cut off a little bit of that burlap string so that it's not so long. For the small star, I'm getting into my rubber stamping kit here. And I found the numbers two, five, and I am going to stamp that onto the white star. Now, this is where I realized that this is not my black ink pad because I don't have a black ink pad. I realized this is blue. So you'll see what I do to remedy that. So I go ahead and I put my rubber stamps on my ink pad and then I stamp 25 onto the star. And so because I didn't want this blue, I just took my black Sharpie and I just went over it with the black Sharpie. And that's how I was able to cover this up. Um, Cause I don't know, I just, blue wasn't gonna go with what I had going on. As you can see here, using the black Sharpie covered up all that blue, so now we have a black. And I also added the TH after the 25. Once that's dry, we're just gonna take some hot glue and we're gonna glue that down onto our red star. Now I'm just gonna take some jute twine and I'm gonna run it through the top of this Christmas ornament sign for a hanger. you're going to need a wooden star again uh, you know where I got this I'm not going to say it <laughs> and then I'm using some material that I got from Hobby Lobby it was actually one of their bandanas and it's just something that I had in my scraps you can use any kind of material you want but I'm using this because it's thin and we're going to mod podge the material onto the star that's why I kind of wanted it a little thin Once I have a thin coat of Mod Podge on the star, I'm going to apply the material, making sure there's no wrinkles in it, and I'm just going to let that dry. Once that's dry, I'm going to apply a second coat of Mod Podge on top, and we're going to let this dry thoroughly before we move on to our next step. Once all the Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to take a really sharp utility knife or X-Acto knife and I'm just gonna cut around the star and cut off all the excess material. When I have all the extra material cut off, I'm gonna take one of these um, little 
like wooden signs you can get from the Dollar Tree that says Merry Christmas, and I'm gonna hot glue that onto my star. <laughs> going to take some greenery and I'm going to um, glue it onto the bottom of the star and this is just some greenery I got from the Dollar Tree with some little these berry picks and I'm just going to kind of put like a little swag together for the bottom of this the greenery that I actually am using is just one of those uh, garland picks that you can get from the Dollar Tree in the pack of 10 and then these berries come from a dollar or a flower pick from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just trimming it and making a swag. As you can see here, which I've already told you I was making a swag. <laughs> but let me tell you again, I'm making a swag. And here I decided that it needed a little uh, more variety of greenery. So I just took some of these like, I don't know snowy picks and I just added it into the swag and glued those down. Once I have the little swag completed, which I think is really pretty, I'm going to take one of these buffalo check bows and I'm going to glue that to the top of the star. Before I glued the bow down, I decided it needs some greenery at the top here too. So I just took a little bit of the greenery off them floral picks and I'm going to glue it underneath the bow. Project, we're going to need one of these wooden Christmas ornaments and I, we are going to paint it and we're going to paint it with the antique white and I ended up giving this two coats and you just need to paint one side. You can do both sides if you're going to hang it up but I'm not going to hang it up so I only painted the front side. Okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to paint a buffalo check pattern onto this ornament. As you can see here I'm just taping off my sections. Now stick with me on this guys because this is the first time I've attempted to paint a buffalo check pattern on anything. So I had to watch plenty of YouTube tutorials and videos to figure out how to do this. And unfortunately there's a lot of YouTube tutorials out there for perfectly square and perfectly round pieces. But there's nothing out there to tell me how I could tape off and uh, whatever shape this is, this wooden ornament that I purchased from the Dollar Tree, there's nothing out there to show me how to do this. So this was all me learning and the first time doing buffalo check. So right now I'm just taping off my vertical lines that I need to be able to go over this with my second lightest coat of paint. I've already went over it with my lighter coat, which was the antique white. And now I'm going to tape this off and go over it with my um, other coat that I'm wanting to use, which is an elephant gray. Now that I have all of my lines taped and how I want to paint it, I'm just going to go in with the elephant gray and I'm going to give this two coats. Okay, so once our paint is dry, we're just going to remove the painter's tape and then I'm going to flip the ornament around to where those lines are actually horizontal and we're going to add some more tape going vertical across those horizontal lines. Now once we have it all taped off, this is what you should be left with and now you're just going to paint this with two coats of elephant chalk paint. And I'm using Apple Barrels Elephant Gray in the matte finish. Now what I'm doing here is I'm leaving that tape on and my paint is still a little bit wet. I know this isn't going to make sense to a lot of people, but I found that this is the easiest way 
to make something look vintage and to kind of rustic it up without having to do a lot of sanding. So with the paint still a little bit wet, I'm just adding more of my painter's tape on top of the paint that we are, or on top of the tape that we already had. And now I'm just going across those lines to make like a tic-tac-toe board. Once we have everything taped up, I'm going to go in with this barn red. And I'm just going to give this two coats all over this project. And you can see once we have it taped off, you should have what looks to be like a checkered board or a tic-tac-toe board. However you want to look at it. And I'm going to give this two coats with the red. Once the paint is dry, but I didn't let it dry completely, like I didn't let it set, because I found that this is the easiest way to get the vintage look that I'm looking for without having to do all the sanding with your hand, I lifted the tape up. And what this will do is this will bring up some of that paint, as you can see here. And this is gonna give me the vintage look that I'm looking for without having to do all the work. When you have all the tape pulled up, this is what you should have left underneath. As you can see, I didn't really use all the traditional light colors for Buffalo Chuck because I wanted to be the I wanted this piece to be really vintagey and really stand out. And I wanted this to look like something that you would get in the 1970s. So that's why, like I said, when you pulled the tape up, if the paint's still a little wet, you don't have to sand this. You can tell it looks old. It's already peeling. It's crusty. This is what I wanted. Once I have all the tape pulled up, though, I am going to go ahead and finish setting it and drying it with my heat gun. Now we're going to go ahead and set that to the side, and we're going to start working on the second half of this project, which I'm using one of these ovals that I got from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to paint this in the antique white. And you only need to paint the front because the back's going to be glued down. While that piece is drying, I got into my stash and I got out some letters and I spelled the word Jingle Bells. And I'm going to um, use a Sharpie marker to paint these because I just find using Sharpie markers is easier than paint markers to paint these letters. Um, it doesn't take very long to dry and they're done in a minute. And I can't remember where I got these letters. I honestly want to say I got them from Hobby Lobby, but it could have been a set of letters I got from the Dollar Tree even though I don't ever remember seeing these kind of letters at the Dollar Tree. So I'm not really for sure where I got these, but you can use any kind of wooden letters that you have. And here I'm just going to start painting them with my black Sharpie marker. You will also notice that when I start painting these, these are actually going to turn out to be kind of like a dark brown. Don't ask me how that works. A black Sharpie marker on the wood, for some reason, makes it a dark brown. And by accident, I ended up loving this color. When our letters are done, we're just going to start uh, lining them up on our oval. And I'm just using a ruler so that I can get these straight. And what I did is I glued down the letter J and the letter E so that I can get all the spacing right in between. I just find it easier for me to do it this way. And then I'm just going to kind of line them up and go through and glue them down. When our letters are all glued down, I'm now going to add some wood glue to the back of this oval as well as some hot glue so that I have the temporary quick hold and the permanent hold. And I'm just using Gorilla Wood Glue. And I'm going to paint this on with a paintbrush just so that I could get a nice even coat. After adding some hot glue to the wood glue, I'm going to turn this over and we are going to center it on our ornament and make sure it is glued down. And then I'm going to put something heavy on it just until it dries, so that it dries flat. Using Waverly's Antique Wax, I'm going to go in and just kind of make this look a little more vintage by dry brushing some of this on the edges and on the Jingle Bells part. And this is just going to give it more of a vintage look. Now I'm just going to make me a bow using all of my scrap ribbon from my stash. I am not a bow maker, nor am I an expert. I couldn't tell you what kind of bow this is. I'm just throwing some scrap ribbon together, making a pretty bow for the top of this ornament. And I'm using some burlap ribbon, some red ribbon, and some black ribbon, all purchased from the Dollar Tree. When we have our bow made, we're just going to glue it down onto our Christmas ornament. And you notice I did give this bow like four long tails. 
I'm going to end up trimming those down just a little bit, but I do want to leave some length on them because we're going to glue some bells on them. After trimming our tails, you can see that I did leave some length on them. I didn't trim them too short, so this is what we should have. So when you make your bow, you want to make sure you leave yourself some tails. You don't need four tails, but I just thought it looked nice and more vintage, so that's why I gave my bow four tails. Using a pine cone from my stash, I just glue that onto the middle of the bow to kind of just give the bow a little more dimension and again, make it look more vintage. How many times have I said vintage in this video? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'm gonna take two of these silver bells that I had and I'm gonna glue those onto the tails of my ribbon and I'm gonna glue it onto the red tails. That's why I said we need to leave those tails a little bit long because I wanted to glue some bells on them. Is my Using some of that red ribbon we have left over from our bow, I'm just going to glue it onto the back to make a hanger so that I can hang this on the wall or a command hook on the door. project I'm going to take one of these wooden Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give it two coats of this holly branch paint by Apple Barrel and I'm going to paint both front and back because you're going to be able to see the back. While our Christmas tree is drying I'm going to take this merry and bright sign and we are going to start working on it and I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint in crimson to paint the word merry. When we have the word Mary painted, I'm going to go in with this um, folk art paint in pearl white and I am going to paint the word bright with this. Off camera, I went ahead and painted the Epperson symbol, I think that's how you see it, in the color pavement. With the word bright still being a little bit wet from our um, pearl white paint, I'm taking some of this silver glitter, again from Folk Art, it's kind of like a silver glitter paint, and I'm going to go over the word bright with this, and it just adds a subtle hint of glitter to it without having the mess of glitter. I love using these two colors together at Christmas time, it always comes out so pretty and nice, plus you don't have big chunky glitter falling off everything. Christmas tree. I'm also going to go over the ampersand symbol with the same um, silver glitter. And like I said, this is just going to add a subtle hint of glitter to it without it falling off the sign and making it look all chunky and cheap. The leaves are so unchanging. We're just going to set the Merry and Bright sign to the side to let it dry. And now I'm going to finish working on the Christmas tree. And what I'm first going to do is I've decided to add a star to this. So I'm taking one of the wooden stars that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to start out by painting it with the pearl white that I painted the word bright in. And before it dries, then I'm going to add more of the um, silver paint, the silver glitter paint to it so that it has the glitter look. Setting the star aside to let it dry, we're going to start working on our Christmas tree. And what I want to do is I want to add these LED lights to it. So we have to drill some holes. So I turned the Christmas tree around and the easiest way I found to get the correct placement for the holes is I taped the lights down where I wanted them on the back. And all I did was use some masking tape to tape these down. Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Now that I have my lights taped down, I'm just gonna take an ink pen or a pencil, whatever you have, and I'm just gonna draw a little circle underneath the light where I wanna drill the holes. The are so when I have all of my little dots drawn on my Christmas tree, I'm just gonna remove the lights from the back and we're gonna start drilling our holes. Now 
just going to use my little rotary tool that I purchased off Amazon and I'm going to drill out all of my holes. Once our holes are drilled out, this is what you should have. You should have a hole big enough to be able to fit the lights through the hole. So working from the back, we're going to start putting our lights in the holes. And to make this a little more sturdy, I did go around these lights with some hot glue. You don't have to worry about it melting the wire because there is this like hard acrylic over the light bulb. So um, I just did this so that it wouldn't move or fall out of the hole. And I did get these lights from Dollar Tree and all they require is two AA batteries. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, such pleasure do you bring me. Before I add the battery pack to the back, I want to go ahead and complete this tree. So I'm going to take that star that we painted now that it's dry and we're going to go ahead and glue it to the top of the tree. Now I'm going to take some of this berry garland that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut off about um, about a foot or about two feet I would say of this garland to wrap around my tree. Using a little bit of hot glue I just glued it onto the back of our tree and I'm holding that down because you know this pip garland wants to pop right back up and I'm just going to let that dry and I'm going to weave it through the wires of the lights around the tree. Now we're going to use two of these cubes that you can get from the Dollar Tree and it's just little mini cubes and we're going to glue these onto the Christmas tree on both sides there at the bottom. When we have our cubes glued on, now I'm going to take the Merry and Bright and we're going to glue that onto the cubes. But first we're going to glue down that pit bearing garland to the side of this cube. That way it's hidden by the Merry and Bright sign. I do want this tree to stand, so I'm taking two of these tower tumbling blocks and I'm going to glue them together and we're going to attach it to the back of the tree with some hot glue. I'm going to take a set of these fastener dots and I'm going to put them on the back of my battery pack so that we can attach the battery pack to the Christmas tree. I didn't want to use hot glue for this because I want to be able to take these lights off if I want to. So I just attached it to the back of the battery pack that way we can take the battery pack on and off. And now to finish off this project, I'm just going to take a lighter to burn off all the glue webs. enjoyed today's video please give me a thumbs up it really does help my channel grow and if you guys like these type of videos don't forget to hit that subscribe button and when you do hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified of all of my future uploads and to help my channel even more be sure to click on one of the videos that's popping up on your screen now thanks guys see you in the next video bye